everyone. Thank you for joining us. Um, I'm really excited to be here with uh, Eiji and Kunimitsu-san. Yep. Um, and uh, just, just a real quick show of hands. How many people here have, have tried uh, like either an Oculus or a Vive kind of high-end VR? Oh. Wow. A lot. Okay, that's a lot. Yeah, so that's, many, that's great. Huh? So last year, it would have been like 25% of yeah. this crowd. Um, and there's one more show of hands. How many people have tried like a HoloLens or uh, one of the kind of higher end AR devices? Wow, this is a surprise. So many people try that, huh? Yeah, this uh, awesome. So, um, uh, Eiji and Kunimitsu both have, um, are coming from uh, large Japanese mobile game companies that have started to both build VR products and invest in VR companies. And so, you know, my first question to you guys is, um, you know, it's been over a year since you started to really participate in the space. I mean, how's it, how's it gone so far? Like, has mm -hmm. it met your expectations? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, in the last one or two years, uh, we launched a lot of, uh, I think, six, seven the VR games, and also some, a few non-gaming stuff in the VR area. And also, that was really good learning experience for me, for us. And as you know, the first generation of the VR headset, the number of shipments is not huge, but at the same time, we launched several uh, products and also launched online and also the location-based offline. So we can get a lot of uh, user feedback, how they, they experience the VR content, and also we can learn a lot. So that was good running experience. And have you had any, like you said, I think you told me backstage, you, you've launched uh, like six products now? Yeah, six, seven products. And so have far. any of those really broken out or been, uh, been hits for you yet? Yeah, one of the titles we launched uh, got the Steam Top Grossing one. So Just how, for how, a day yeah. or two days. <laughs> so, uh, so how much you make for that game? That I cannot tell. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, we partnered with Square Enix, so the publisher was them. But I think you know, many people you know, want to know real, right? So if you know, become you know, number one onto the Steam, how much you can make a day? So I cannot tell the exact number, but I can tell it took just almost one year to develop, and it's very hard to recoup. <laughs> yeah. uh, and so what about Gumi? Yeah, so for us, it's, you know, we are a mobile gaming company, but in these two years, you know, I put you know, so many effort to the VR and the AR spaces, so two years ago, I started Tokyo VR Startup. That's, you know, VR AR focus incubation program, maybe first in Asia. And then later, I start so VR Startups. And then also in here, Nordic VR Startups with Nordic's film. And then also, you know, we start, uh, we are the GP of VR Fund. And then also we put, you know, LP onto the presence fund. Yeah. So you're, yeah. you're super active. Yeah. Basically, you have your hands in many pots. Yeah, so in two years, you know, I put you know, so many effort and also so many money, right? So right now, my board member and they're also shareholder is you know, always asking me, like, you know, VR is, you know, when the VR is coming, right? <laughs> but, you know, always, you know, my answer is the same. Believe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, you know, so far, I think, you know, hardware is an issue, right? So like, you know, two years ago, uh, head mount displays, you know, so expensive. Uh, cost, including the PC, like, you know, 2000 That's too expensive, right? But, you know, currently, you know, most of the headset is, you know, price is going down. So I think, you know, market size is, you know, growing. So I have, you know, big confidence onto the future of VR and the AR. So do you guys, I mean, now, you know, you've, you both have kind of real numbers yep. uh, from where you originally started from to now. Do you think you actually timed the market correctly or do you feel that you were too early? No, I think, um, yeah, we are good timing. Because uh, we, now we, are, we can get a lot of expertise and knowledge and also we are investing a lot of startups. That's, that's what we could do uh, because we started earlier. So it's just good time to see how the actual market grows. Do you think it's possible to, you know, today to be able to invest in a, in a VR game or a company and actually see a return on that investment? In the 
maybe next two, three years, we can see a return. Yeah, so if you know, we see the fact uh, last year, only on the Steam platform, uh, eight title, eight game sells more than one million. And then this year, 18 title sells more than one million, right? And then including the Oculus and also PlayStation, 30 title uh, sells more than one million. It's not monthly, it's cumulated, uh, right? Yeah, accumulate. Yeah. But you know, what surprises, you know, uh, like, you know, Job Simulator or, you know, Road Data, the title, the sales is, you know, still, you know, climbing. So the meaning is, you know, when user is growing and then they buy the title, right? So if, you know, only the PC game, if, you know, that game is, you know, sales and next year sales is zero, right? But, you know, still, you know, market is, you know, growing. So top title, user is, you know, keep, you know, buying. So I think, you know, now is, you know, very good timing to, you know, join in the market. Yep. And which, uh, which aspect of VR would you focus on? You know, if you're giving, you know, potentially there's a lot of folks here who are interested in participating in the space. You know, there's mobile VR with, like, Daydream and, and uh, the Samsung Gear VR. Mm -hmm. And then there's um, kind of... Console VR, so it's a PlayStation VR. Microsoft is probably mm -hmm. going to do something there. And at the high end, there's Window Holographic, um, Oculus Rift, and Vive. So given those kind of three independent segments, you know, where do you think the heat is right now if you were to st and, you know, start investing in a, or building a game today? Yeah, we have two focus. The one is location-based high-end VR games. So we, uh, we usually use the uh, HTC Vive to actually develop the game on the PC, high-end VR, and then install into the real location. So we have uh, two uh, VR entertainment space in Tokyo, and it's operating well and making profit. And also the second focus is mobile. So for the mobile, uh, we're focusing more casual and online multiplayer experience so that we can grow more user base. And maybe they, they don't pay a lot, Power users, but we can grow the user base. So those high-end location-based and casual mobile multiplayer, that's our two focus. But what do you think, you know, mobile? So yeah, I do believe you know location-based game is you know works, but you know mobile VR experience is you know so poor, right? Just uh, 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 user is you know willingly to buy yeah. that. Yeah, we can optimize the experience for mobile, so you don't need to have position tracking, just, you know, um, view point, uh, pointing a view and uh, some fleet of controller. So how we can design games so that it can be fit for the, the mobile. And, and so um, there's, there's two, two things I want to touch on there. First is um, you mentioned the VR arcades that you're operating in Tokyo are profitable. Yeah, it's so, profitable. So, so, so what, is that, what does that experience look like? Because I, I think potentially a lot of people haven't, haven't been to one of those yet, because those are fairly new. So can you maybe just describe like, how, how, how like the business of that oh, works? Yeah. The, how the location works is that uh, we have one floor of the you know, building in the center of Sibuya, and there are 10 experiences, 10 VR experiences installed in the floor. And then we don't charge uh, by you know, play, per play. We charge per uh, time. So basically, the once the player got into the space, they have 75 minutes. And then they pay 20 bucks or 30 bucks. And then they can play you know, anything for any time uh, within the 75 minutes. So that model works. So one of the things that you know, we've been seeing a lot of is um, that a lot of these location-based services, and just, just the, given the, the current fragile nature of VR, is that you, have a, you need a lot of people to basically operate these, yeah, yeah, these yeah. boots, right? So the, mm -hmm. the overhead from, uh, from all, all the staff is really high. Um, has, has that been true in your case? Are you seeing, have you guys done things to actually make that more effective? Is there like something oh, yeah. that's working? Uh, yeah, so uh, we have, you know, so VR startups, right? So in the so is very popular to the, like, internet cafe. So they used to, you know, play a PC game on 2D cafes. So they have, you know, so many internet cafe. So most of, many of the startup is, you know, focusing on that. 
and the one company, they are making the chair. So uh, the problem of the location is, you know, they need a sensor and, you know, code, right? So they need a big spaces. But, you know, if, you know, they have, you know, some chair and then just, you know, can move around this and that, only, you know, space is, you know, here, right? So, yeah, for that is, you know, make space, you know, more, you know, efficient. For the, for the VR arcade space we have in Tokyo, we have a lot of people. I mean, those uh, cast, they, have, they help people, they help players to enjoy the experience. And also, I think those people operation is part of experience. They are, they are very good at to, you know, uh, make them, make customers enjoy. So that's the one model. And also the second model we are now trying is the partner with the shopping mall chain, biggest shopping mall chain in Japan. Now we made the three type of the VR games, which is operation free. So it's very easy to use and also doesn't require any support stuff. And then we will install those three games into the 300 locations uh, around the Japan. So that's what we are now trying. And we did location test, and it went well. And then we, we are rolling out uh, gradually in the next several months. So we will see how it goes. It, that's uh, how the operation-free VR experience will work. Yeah. So um, I, I have a question for, for, for both of you, and maybe you can share your opinion first. Is um, So we, we, we've talked a lot about, like, kind of, look, there's three different models here, right, that have been discussed. One is location-based, where it's kind of time-based. Then there's this downloadable software, which we're seeing on Steam. But both of your companies are known for free-to-play mobile games, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So, 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 so when are we going to see kind of free-to-play be a real business model for VR? Perhaps you could start. But I think, so, you know, uh, for the VR, free-to-play you know, doesn't work. That's because, you know, right now, at this moment, user base is, you know, too little, right? Yeah, so for the mobile game, yeah, there is, you know, tons of the user base, right? So that's why, you know, free-to-play works. So if, you know, we, yeah, we all, you know, was in the mobile gaming business, right? So if, you know, think about, like, 2007, when the iPhone is come, most of the title is premium, right? So even, even the Angry Bird or, you know, those title is premium. That's because, you know, user base is, you know, too little. But eventually, you know, user base is, you know, you know, climbing. And then free to play is, you know, coming, right? So I think, you know, VR is also similar way. So start from premium. And then when, you know, headset is, you know, more. And then become, you know, free to play. Is it? Yeah, I have a similar hypothesis. And actually, we are launching the free-to-play mobile VR game this month. So we're trying to see <laughs> how, <laughs> right, how it happen. Well, we we'll look forward. Please write a blog post so you can actually illuminate us on how that goes. Um, so I have a slightly different view. I'll, you know, um, I think that uh, even with the user base, one of the problems that we're seeing with VR today is that it's really hard to get in and out of the experience quickly. And if you yeah. think about mobile games, it's about daily, basically daily engagement, mm -hmm. right? But I think, and I, I'll probably ask you, how often do you both use VR? Not much. Yeah. Yeah, a few days a week. A few days a week. That's still higher than most and yeah. similar. Yeah, similar. But, but you know, that's, you know, maybe not fair questions. So we have to, you know, compare VR with uh, PlayStation 4 or Xbox. So I only play, you know, PlayStation 4 at the weekend, similar with VR. So I think, you know, uh, as a game, VR is, you know, competing against, you know, PC game or like, you know, PlayStation 4, not competing against mobile. But do you think there is a, do you think there is a, um, a time when we're going to start to use VR much more regularly? And if so, what needs to happen to the hardware or yeah, what needs to happen to the platforms in order to enable that sort of both for gaming and for non-gaming applications? Yeah, we need to wait for the you know, grass type, the headset. Yeah, so for my opinion is uh, we all, you know, uh, have maybe same opinions. 
So we call, you know, VL and the AL and the ML, and then total is, you know, XL, right? So complicated, you know, uh, thinking. But, you know, VL is, you know, totally, like, you know, in the VL spaces, right? So that's not, you know, day-to-day -day use case. So for the AL, is you know, next, you know, smartphone, right? So I think, you know, VR is, you know, uh, not going to be like, you know, smartphones, but AR does. So, I mean, you're both heavily based in Asia. Do you think that, um, this is an audience question, do you think that the Asian market is actually ahead of uh, the Western market in terms of VR and AR mass commercialization? At least, Relating to the location-based, uh, Asian, some some of the Asian countries uh, have advantage because uh, in Japan we still have game centers, arcade game centers, which basically extinct in Western world. We have all still, and also in uh, as Kunimitsu-san said, in Korea or China, uh, there are lots of you know internet cafes. So that that you know infrastructure is advantage. So, so do you think we should keep an eye on Japan to see, and then basically f see what's working there, and then bring that to to what? Yeah, to the some of them it, it will work. Cause uh, I I've been telling about the location-based VR from two years ago, and then at that time nobody from the Western world said about that. But now you know Western startups and VR industry people they talk about location-based VR a lot. Yeah, so yeah. you know that uh, The Void just uh, did a partnership with Disney to bring Star Wars mm -hmm. to, uh, to Disneyland. So that just opened up in LA recently. And IMAX is also getting really, you know, really deep into VR as well. And they're starting to open up VR centers in, in the West. So we're definitely seeing that. And I, I had a very similar experience where I visited China two years ago. And mm -hmm. there was VR arcade machinery everywhere, but we hadn't seen any of it yet in the West. Yeah. So in here, what do you know I really want to say is now is really good timing to join in the VR. And then especially, you know, if here, like, you know, Nordic countries, if, you know, I start, you know, own startup, yeah, I do game and entertainment. That's because, you know, in this world, in this area, it's, you know, so weird. I, you know, do LP investment to you guys. And also, you know, we have a fund in the Silicon Valley, right? But most of the VC, Silicon Valley, like, you know, VC, they don't like content, they don't like game. They only invest it to the tool or, you know, platform, right? But, you know, just think, user only care about content, game, experience, right? So no user care about platform or, you know, content creation tool. So for the VR, what we need is, you know, good content. But, you know, no U.S., you know, startup is making that. But, you know, somebody has to, you know, make, you know, good content. Otherwise, you know, VR is, you know, not come up, right? So, 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 let, me, so let me ask you the hard question then, uh -huh. right? Which is, you know, we've talked a little bit about the return on, on, on the investment in this content. You know, how, and also the fact that maybe it's a two to three year horizon before we start to see uh, kind of mass market adoption. So how do you overcome that, both that funding gap and that timing gap? Yeah, so I think, so, you know, uh, we seen for the gaming industry, you know, we seen, like, you know, 2008 or nine, many people say mobile, uh, no one played a game onto the mobile, right? But, you know, after Angry Bird is come, and then Clash of Clans or, so one game, you know, changing everything, right? So I think, so, you know, uh, so far, what need for the VR is two things. One is uh, cheap, high-end, standalone HMD. When, when, when do you think that's coming? Uh, end, of next, end of next year to early next, next year. So Oculus is already announced, you know, uh, like Santa Cruz, right? Yeah, so yeah. Oculus, that was, that was a, that's a pretty big, so I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a with you on this, is that standalone VR is kind of a game changer for the user experience, right? Because you basically, you put it on, you're in VR, you have a native interface. Um, Oculus, for those that don't know, they announced this thing called the Santa Cruz prototype, which is effectively a fully contained computer and screen 
um, that is able to track your hands and track your movement in space. So effectively, it's, a, it's, a, it's an Oculus Rift plus touch controllers uh, fully contained. So you can imagine that you get the experience of having high-end PC VR, but in a standalone device. And yeah, and many people are saying the price is you know, going to less than 500, right? Then you know the price is you know same as you know PlayStation 4 when that you know come up right. So end of next year, hardware is good enough. So what we need is you know good content right. So in Japan, what you know everybody was surprised is you know no one thinks you know Nintendo Switch success. That's because many people say no content, only Zelda right. But you know, result is you know everybody buy Nintendo Switch. That's because of Zelda. Yeah. So only one content is enough to user to buy. So yeah, end of next year, hardware is come. So what we need is you know content, right? So I think you know maybe here many people you know try to you know start up, right? So for the startup, it's you know very good timing. Like 10 years ago, Rovio is you know tiny company, right? And the Supercell is also small, and they also us. I, I do think there's an opportunity to to basically be early. Um, so I mean, that's one of the things is you know I, I was uh, very early on social platforms. You guys were early on mobile, um, and we found that when you're working with the platform owners at an early stage, they're willing to work with you in terms of funding, in terms yeah, yeah. of distribution. So there is that advantage. And I still think that's there because these platforms haven't yet been established. But as soon as you're you know Two, you know, two years down, and it's easy for people to get, you know, start getting users on these platforms. They're going to actually turn down the amount that they're helping you. Um, so we, we only have a few minutes left, so I, I want to kind of switch gears a little bit to, to actually talk about non-gaming VR applications. Um, what are some of the things that you guys have seen kind of outside of gaming that have excited you? Maybe some investments you've made, um, and I'd love to hear kind of about outside of gaming what you're doing. Yeah, we've invested in several of the VR companies in non-gaming space and then the recently the hot one of the hot area is the training so that you know the enterprise like manufacturer or um, you know the airplane makers or car makers they 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 have they invest they have invested a lot in training and simulation and the vr ar can replace some of them by for very cheap so they invest in those area, and also we invested in several startups working in the space. So that's kind of interesting now. Hmm. Uh, what have you guys I done outside of the, uh, outside of gaming? Uh, platform and contention uh, yeah. too. Yeah. But you know that you know you guys like that, right? <laughs> so you guys you know invest into those area. I invest into you know entertainment okay. area. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. So. Um, uh, you know, we, this is actually our focus area. We do a lot of stuff outside gaming. And, I, and I'll go on record as saying that I think potentially the first billion dollar VR software company is going to be a training company. Um, you know, we've, uh, we've seen stuff, we have like four or five different companies now using VR for, uh, to help people basically pick up new skills. So for example, one that is, is really interesting is uh, it's like a sports training that they were using for like the NFL and the NHL yeah. to, to train the athletes. Um, but now they took that same technology um, and they've gone to Walmart and now Walmart's using them for treating uh, or for training their their greeters during Black Friday. I'm sure I, I'm, I'm sure people have heard of American Black Fridays. They're kind of notorious, you know, notorious. Yeah. Um, so instead of actually having to experience that for the first time in the store. You first experience it in VR, which sounds actually kind of scary if you think about it. It's like maybe a bad use of VR, but yeah. um, it gives people that idea of that spatial awareness and that understanding of a situation before you ever actually experience it in the real world. So um, I 100% agree with you that training, I think, is, is a really hot area. Um, what about an AR? Are you guys doing any work in AR right now? Yeah, AR is similar. I will invest in the company which is the making a solution for the training slash kind of teaching the, the, the appliance maintenance. So basically there are lots of um, tens of millions of operators uh, around the US. For example, they go to the, the each residence to fix the Com Comcast set up a box. And then they need to train beforehand to go to the, those homes. 
for to fix those appliances. And then there are tons of types of the set of box, and so they have to learn a lot of manuals. But uh, with the AR solution, just they can go to the home, and then they see uh, the, the set of box through the glasses, and then this video is streamed to the, the control center, and then very trained supervisor can tell those operators, okay, so this side of box is now you know broken, and just connect this cable or yeah. switch off this one. It was blah, blah, blah. So it's basically remote assistance yeah. for for technicians. Yeah. Uh, this is this is also I, I think a really big. Um, uh, I, I think the implications of this aren't yet apparent. Uh, that like this changes the nature of work, right? Yeah, you yeah. can go and do a job without ever ever having seen a device before. Yeah. yeah so yeah. if you go to like um, I, I've heard stories of uh, a technician. Who basically would go to like a, a, like an aircraft engine and could follow the steps of like put a wrench here, take this bolt out, do yeah. this like it's basically paint by numbers, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you're able to do something that's highly technical that you may have never seen on machinery you've never seen before, and like be do the job. Yeah. So in some ways, it's like you know instead of uh, robots you know replacing humans, it's that the humans are now the hands yeah, yeah, for exactly. the for the AI or for the software, right? Yeah, yeah. I think that would be cheaper than making robot. Yeah, I know in a lot of ways, yeah. 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 So it can change the, you know, those, you know, labor market. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, for the AI, right? So I think so, you know, uh, many people, everybody, you know, watching out the AI. So for future of the AI, it's your know, next smartphone. So yeah, we do be deep, you know, from now 10 years you know, no one is, you know, watching this, right, smartphone. This is, you know, so tiny and annoying, right? So, uh, future's UI is, you know, we all know, like Iron Man or, you know, Dragon Ball, like, you know, uh, own eye is connected to the internet, and then here is a monitor, right? So, Apple is, you know, announced, you know, so important things. They, this year, they announced AR kit, that's, you know, using normal camera and then tracking that you know position right and then next year they are going to be put AR cloud and then also next year or next next year they are going to be put you know depth camera onto the now it's only the front but you know back end that's you know going to be uh, 2019 right and then 2020 AR glasses come so I think you know uh, post Smartphone is, you know, coming very soon, and then Apple is, you know, making that right. So, so that's that's a, that's a pretty great place to actually yeah. to to end it, right? Because so basically the prediction here is 2019 Air glasses mm -hmm. going to replace a smartphone. Yep. So great. Do you agree with that? Yep. It's um, coming. I think it's there too. I but you know, we'll see. Hopefully, hopefully we're right because it really is a game changer. All right, guys, we're out of time. Thank you so much for having Thank us. You. Um, <laughs>